Thank you for having me here. I gotta say though, I'm, I, uh, I worked for uh, DNR for 22 years, mainly out of the Cambridge area, and I covered Isani, Chisago, Mille Lacs, and Cannabis County. I just moved down here a couple months ago, and uh, so I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into, but uh, thanks again though. You know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about coyotes, but I'd also like to touch a little bit about black bears too, because black bears, I had a few phone calls from Elk, Elm Creek Park Reserve, is that just to the west here? And um, all I do is give suggestions and educate people. The number one call that I used to get in Cambridge in the spring of the year is on black bears. And I don't know what they put in black oiled sunflower seeds, but black bears love them. And I keep telling people that uh, about 10 years ago, we used to tell them don't feed the birds, you know, for two weeks if you had a bear hit your bird feeder. Because people just, for some reason, people are deathly afraid of black bears. Coyotes, not so much, but black bears, they are. And, uh, but now we tell them, you know, if you're that afraid of black bears, because they are, they're coming. There's more and more black bears in my work area, which is now Anoka, Washington, Ramsey, and Hennepin County. Just don't feed that. Get rid of that food source. Get rid of that food source. And that comes to coyotes, too. People leave pet food out, garbage. And some people actually feed coyotes. And the more food that you bring in, that these coyotes are gonna come in and they're gonna cause a problem. They're gonna get used to people. But starting with coyotes, I don't, I'm not sure if anybody's ever actually seen a coyote before, so I brought this guy in right here. I always get calls on timber wolves. Timber wolves, the coyotes. This is a coyote. This is an average size coyote. It's about 25 pounds. I register fur in the fall, a big coyote is between 35 and 40 pounds. You don't see anything over 40 pounds. And to tell you the truth, I grew up in northeastern Minnesota. I've seen a number of timber wolves. For the life of me, I can't see how somebody can mistake a timber wolf to a coyote. But I think people just get that impression, especially this fall, with all the timber wolf talk that we've had in the, in the, in the news with the, the hunt. You know, people see a timber wolf. But a timber wolf, I call them long-legged coyotes, because a timber wolf's legs are built, are gonna be about a foot above the actual size of a coyote. And I registered wolves this uh, fall. I had to uh, do some necropsy studies on timber wolves. I did a dozen of them. And they range from 70 to 90 pounds, but I actually just did one uh, last week, and it was 125 pounds. And there's no way you can differentiate between, or you can mistake one for a coyote. But on coyotes, they start breeding in January and February. And their gestation period is about 60 days. So they start having their pups in about April, May. And then they raise their pups through the summer. And then they, the pups start to disperse. <clears throat> and that's another difference between coyotes and timber wolves. They're full grown in one year. And they, you know, people say packs and packs, you know, a big pack of coyotes is probably three to four, maybe five. So it's two adults the young and the pups. Because that, that once they just start dispersing in the fall, they're of breeding age, and they're gonna, start to, uh, they're gonna start to mate again in December, January, and February. Timber wolves, it takes two years for them to, to, get, to reach that full growth. And uh, the diet of, of coyotes, there's a really good study in Chicago, and if you go on our uh, Minnesota DNR webpage, just click on coyotes, and it's through Ohio State University, and it's, it's full of literature. It's really good talks about urban coyotes. There's always talks about coyotes eating pets, cats, dogs. To tell you the truth, where I came from in Cambridge, I say any more rural area, the number one thing on the menu for coyotes is tomcat, tomcats, feral cats. And in our mind, the DNR minds, and hopefully other bird lovers, what that gentleman was just talking about, that's not such a bad thing to tell you the truth. You know, there's got to be some responsible pet owners. You know, and cats do a lot of damage to ground nesting birds. And uh, coyotes thin them out pretty quick if they find feral cats out there. For pets, dogs, to tell you the truth, I haven't had, personally, I haven't had a lot of calls on coyotes attacking dogs. So I don't have a lot of history on that. But uh, um, the diet of a coyote through this Chicago coyote study was, the number one was that, uh, animal on the diet was rodents, mice, voles, then you have rabbits and deer. 
You know, it's a pretty small animal, but you start thinking about it, fawns. And you know, for an adult deer to be taken by a coyote, I hardly doubt it unless it's injured. Or this time of the year, you have bucks that have gone through the ruts and gone through the mating season, so they're pretty weak, you know, they're pretty beat up. They could probably take one of those. But coyotes, they thin, thin out deer, turkeys, rabbits, raccoons, vegetation, grass. So they're pretty, they're scavengers also. You know, they'll take roadkill. And I work with municipalities in the Twin Cities here, and a number of them, I was just telling Mike that a number of them, about a dozen cities, have shooting permits out there. And they're taking, you know, Eden Prairie, say, let's just use them for instance. And this, this isn't hunting, this is shooting permits. So they pay a contractor, and that's between three to $400 per deer. And they shot 110 deer this year. So that's a pretty substantial amount of money. And these guys can thin out the population, not you know, totally annihilate the deer population, but they do take deer. And the next problem that I can see in Brooklyn Park, we're getting in Edina, Plymouth, Golden Valley, Minnetonka, is turkeys. Turkeys are everywhere. And these guys, pardon me? Oh, yeah. And it, I give them on landscaping, you know, they're scratching through people's landscaping through, and you know, you can harass them and try and spook them away, but you have to stay at it. Same thing with these guys. You know, I, uh, one of your residents gave me the article that was in the newspaper about a 14 year old that uh, got, was walking a dog, a pet, correct, in the street, and uh, got nervous, maybe a coyote jumped out, and more than likely startled the kid, I think he was 14 years old. You know, if they weren't expecting it, yeah, I'd probably be a little bit nervous. Are they gonna attack that kid? You can't say for certain that they're not, or they are. You, you, on, that, on, that, uh, on the article on the Chicago uh, coyotes, it talks about they did a whole research on North America on a number of attacks on individuals, on humans. And uh, I don't have the numbers or anything, but it's pretty minimal. And I was also talking to Mike, you know, I live just north of here a little ways. And to tell you the truth, I'd be more worried about people's pets, German Shepherds, Rottweilers, other domestic dogs than I would a coyote. That's my own personal belief. And um, um, I don't know what else I was going to talk about. Kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, <clears throat> Is there any questions? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I was talking about something else. Oh, go ahead. I heard on the show that coyotes bite the back tendons of the animal that they're trying to take down so that the tendons are like busted and the animal can't get away. On a deer? Well, deer or dogs, you know, if they kill them, then um, the rates just go lower. You know, I don't know about dogs. I can talk about deer. If they're going to take a full-grown deer, they're going to be, it's going to be more of a, it's going to be three or four. There's going to be more than one individual. This animal cannot take a full-grown deer. So there's going to be more than one animal. And more likely with, with, any, with a coyote or a wolf, they're going to try and wear them out a little bit, especially when you get deeper snow. They can kind of float on top of that snow where a deer breaks down through that snow and wear them out, and then they'll kill them. I don't know about the tendons. I don't know anything about coyotes and dog attacks. I can't really, I'm not an expert on that. Well, the gentleman, and he owns a farm, and there, he's like on a you know, side road, and there's a, a roadkill that's really killed by an automobile. Mm -hmm. And his dog went out the last one, was it night, and he found it in his grass. And he had heard the coyotes out in the field, so that around where the deer was, and he went out there with his vehicle and the gun, and they had bit the back of his dog's leg, Oh. Uh -oh. No, there's no way, you know, there's just, especially in an urban setting, we don't do that type of stuff. We don't do it in a rural setting. I didn't talk about uh, coyotes, is that they're unregulated. You could shoot a coyote 24 hours a day, 365 days a, a year. The only thing in these urban settings is if you have a 
discharge ordinance. That's the only thing that stops people from hunting or trapping coyotes. Timberwolves. Timberwolves. That was the big thing. There's no permits. Again, there's no, you don't even need a small game license to shoot a coyote. You don't need a license and you can shoot them in the 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There's Timberwolves. We had three specific zones for Timberwolves this year. What's the average lifespan of a coyote? They say in the wild they're about 12 to 13 years. They've had them in the zoos, you know, that lived up close to 20 years, but about 12 to 13 years. They do. That was another point. I give permits to, is Edinburgh somewhere around here? The golf course? I give permits to them about, you know, it's, it, actually, it's a little bit of a balance. I, you know, and I'm just here to tell the DNR side of it. Coyotes, geese, turkeys, rabbits, you know, I get complaints. Again, I came from Cambridge, a little bit more of a rural, and I get, you wouldn't believe the phone calls I get. I won't even go into there, but people talking, calling me about rabbit problems in their gardens. I'm like, wow. You know, if it was out in the sticks, you could just shoot the rabbit. You know, but if it's causing damage, but coyotes take rabbits, rodents. You know, everybody thinks deer are the only animal that carries Lyme's disease or ticks. But it's actually the small rodents that are the main carrier of these ticks. Rabbits, mice, voles. Deer have them, but the, all this, also these small uh, mice and voles carry these ticks too. And these guys love them. Like Mike said, you don't see any rabbits around your area, right? <laughs> Go ahead. That 12 or 13 years you mentioned, that's their longest lifespan. Exactly. You say that, what is their... If they have a <laughs> and, that was, and that was literature from an urban... I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That was literature from an urban setting. Okay. Obviously, you get out into the rural country where there are people actively hunting these things, it's probably closer to four or five years. Okay. In an urban setting where there's no hunting, no trapping, it's a lot different. You said the average uh, litter for their pups is two? No, I didn't, I didn't talk about litters that actually. The average litter is probably six to eight pups, yes. A large litter is probably 10 to 12. Go ahead. What are the chances that they were all going to survive and reach 12 to 13 years old? You know, if you get a couple out of that, you're that's going to be, you're lucky, yeah. <coughs> and it goes from, where you have timber wolves, you don't have coyotes. Where you have coyotes, you don't have a lot of fox. It's that, you know, big brother taking the little brother out. Obviously, we don't have timber wolves in this neck of the woods. The closest breeding range of, ter uh, of timber wolves is Ogilvy, which is in uh, uh, Canada County. It's about an hour and a half north of here. We'll have wolves, I can't say. That's another phone call. I get phone calls on cougars and timber wolves. I'm in the woods more than 99% of the people in the state of Minnesota. I've never seen a cougar. I have seen timber wolves, but I've never seen a cougar. I don't mean to change subjects or anything like that. But, uh, um, you know, you got the Mississippi River coming through Brooklyn Park. So it's a corridor. And every now and then you'll have timber wolves coming through. You know, you'll get uh, adults getting kicked, or excuse me, yearlings getting kicked out of the pack looking for a new territory. And they make their way down to southeastern Minnesota. We had a one about three or four years ago, get shot because somebody thought it was a coyote down near Red Wing. And then you have packs in Wisconsin that come across too, come across that river. But the subject is coyotes. I keep changing the subject. <laughs> Go ahead. Pardon me? Yeah, but smaller packs. I talked a little bit about that. Timberwolves are a little bit more social and they're young, don't breed until they're two years old. Coyotes, their young start breeding when they're one year old, so they get kicked out right away. So it's smaller, groups of maybe three or four to six. Where at timber wolves, you have larger packs because their young stay with them a lot longer. Okay, I just have a question. How would you identify a timber wolf? Yeah. Call local law enforcement. And I'm not sure they do it. It's out of my, it's, it's really out of my hands because it's within the city limits. Black bear, same, same thing. You know, if it's a black bear, it's a little bit different. You know, I'll probably call a conservation officer because it's more of a unique animal. And uh, uh, if it's treed, it attracts people. Where a coyote, if you're gonna, you know, you could spook a coyote away. That's what I was gonna talk about a little bit. If, 
I'm, I'd call the local law enforcement just to ask, ask your, answer your question. For, I think in the article they've shot five or six coyotes, the one that I saw. They must have been sick, you know. They talk about coyotes, if you see them during the day, there's something wrong with that animal. They're more nocturnal. You know, mange is a thing, is a mite that gets into their pelt, into their fur, gets down into their skin, and they scratch. And you'll see big chunks of fur off of that animal. And then in the wintertime, they're more than likely, if you have a severe winter, they're probably not going to make it through that winter. But that can be, that might can be uh, transmitted to other animals, dogs. Go ahead. You did mention that leaving out pet food uh -huh. would be attractive to you. So if you don't want to track them in, you, don't, you wouldn't want to leave food out, basically. But you would also, in theory, they're not going to be coming up to you. What's the likelihood? Seriously, they talk. <clears throat> the biggest mistake that landowners and homeowners make is feeding wild animals. And that's what's changing their whole um, wariness of people. Is that the closer they come, you know, and garbage is a big deal, to tell you the truth. Not just with coyotes, I keep going on and on, but black bears. Coyotes, black bears, um, if you can, you know, I think everybody has those roll-off garbage cans right now. I mean, it's safe to say that they're opportun opportunistic eaters. Exactly. And they're going to find it the easiest way to do so. You know, I'm trying to change my whole talk because this is more of an urban area. But you get on the rural areas, people leave pet food out for their cats and everything like that. It, it probably happens around here. I don't know. Maybe there's people with cats that are outside. But it's one thing that it's going to attract raccoons, which carry distemper. Uh, possums, uh, coyotes, fox, bears. I mean, it's going to attract things that you don't want in your yard, to tell you the truth. What about, um, so bird feed, is there any bird feed that coyotes eat? No, they'll just eat the birds that eat in the bird seed. <laughs> and they do eat ground nesting birds, too. So if you're out in one of our parks and you come across a coyote, what is the best thing for somebody to do? Not to run. Not the run, stand up, put your arms in the air, scare, shout, scream, do everything you can to scare that coyote away. It'll go, it'll be where, it'll run away. But you know, as a kid, again, I have teenagers too. They're gonna, I knew my daughter saw that they'd probably turn around and run away. Even though I, you know, I work for the DNR and they've probably seen coyotes, I could tell them every night they're probably gonna turn around and run away. But that's what you can say to people is to make yourself big, scream, shout, and try to scare that coyote away. Yeah. I came out of school, <coughs> off we went. Yeah. Cannibals. None of them are here outside my drive. 5.30 in the morning. Saw me, I, I chased them on my bike to the head. There you go. You know, down the, down 83rd. The That's the right thing to do is chase them. You know, I, everyone that I've seen in the wild, they'll look at you, they'll see you before you see them, more than likely. They turn around and hightail it away. You know, but it's all these always these unique cases where somebody's walking their dog and um, yeah it more than likely yipped at him a little bit you know it probably scared him I bet but um, if he would have stood his ground raised his hands up and screamed at it they would have turned around and run away has there been a ca any case where a cow has been overrun by coyotes anywhere that the DNR would be aware of no no nope. go ahead It's different in a rural setting than it is in an urban setting, obviously because of habitat and food sources and everything like that. But um, yeah, coyotes and fox, they don't get along. A coyote will take a fox and kill it. Um, the same with a timber wolf. We call them brush wolves up, up north, that's a coyote. A timber wolf will uh, kill a, a coyote. I can't say for sure how big a range is for a coyote in Brooklyn Park. 
It all has to do with habitat. You know, their dens, you know, when they're kicking youngs out, they're going to be looking for a new habitat. And they're going to follow these corridors, Mississippi River, until they found, find suitable habitat for their new den or new, their new territory. Deer? There's no, but I'll just correct it. It doesn't get transmitted to deer. Oh, well, okay, then you have a Yeah, more than likely. But the fox, like, they're almost, he's almost chewing his tail off. Yeah. There's not, and he's out in the day. I mean, is there anything to be concerned about, or do you need help on him? I can answer that. Well, <laughs> The most humane thing would be to put it down. Well, I don't know how to do that. That's all I could tell you. I mean, there's not much, you know, to tell you the truth. In a lot of those cases, my answer is pretty blunt. Let nature take its course or put it down. So they would have to call the police and take them out? Or? That's up. To, different municipalities handle it differently, to tell you the truth. Go ahead. I can tell you that I used to work for the wildlife. They would still tell you you have to catch it, and that's the dangerous part. So that's why letting nature take its course is fine. They also would tell you if it had mange, it's really only a problem when it's the fall and you're heading into winter, because that's when you're more exposed to cold. The rest of the time, it's a nuisance. And wild animals are full of parasites. So that's one of the reasons why you don't want wild animals too close to you anyway. But there's, they don't usually do anything about it if it's in the spring, summer, or early fall. Well, we're approaching winter, so that's why it's not as good right now. And therefore, letting nature take its course might be the best option because trying to catch them can be worse. Than yeah. So, I can only tell you what the wildlife reason is. Go ahead. The story where the, the kid was walking the dog. Yep. The biggest thing in that, uh, um, it, if you go into that uh, DNR webpage and take a look at that, or that study in Chicago, what they talk about is that in January, February, and a little bit of March, they're breeding and they're very territorial. So that's when they're going, they're going to be more, the most aggressive towards people that they suspect of coming into their territory. And that could be dogs for sure. But I'm not, you know, it could have been. When, what, when did it take place? I don't even know. I just read the article, but I didn't. Uh, I don't recall what time it was. Fall. Fall. Yeah. More than likely, just surprised it. And any wild animal, you know, they're going to turn and run for sure. But it probably just surprised them. So do wolves and coyotes live in the same no. area? No. Nope. I saw something quite a lot larger than that walk across my yard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't seen it since, so I don't know if maybe it was making its way over to the river or something to, to go down. But a couple times I've been on the trail in the dark and seen eyes on it. Seen the animals <laughs> so, I get phone well, calls. I, I don't yeah. want to be that big thing that I saw walking one, across my yard. Mm -hmm. The color of their eyes are different from dogs. So they're yellow. They're yellow. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I just want to mention something else. My husband knows someone that was walking their dog on one of the park trails, and they had him out on leash, but the dog went off the trail and killed the other person who was walking them. Like the dog will off, you know, into the brush a little. And I think they think the coyote had tough skin underneath, and so the coyote came out really aggressive, and then they, you know, they ran it off with the one hand dog. So I don't know. The only time they acted. 
That's up to these gentlemen and women, that's not up to me. But the only time they actively use dens, I think you mentioned dens, is in the spring of the year, right when they're having their pups. After that, they pretty much, uh, they'll sleep where, you know, in cattail sloughs. They don't use that den that, that, that often. And they can dig their own dens or they can use dens from groundhogs or badgers or fox. I just got one question. Uh, is there any city or municipality that hosts Not that I'm aware of, no. But I can shoot John an email. I can look, ask Brian Luth. He was the foreign, he, he moved on. He had my position. I can ask him, but I don't think, I'm just I don't think there is. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You have to have a newsletter or something like that. You can just inform your citizens that, uh, you know, you have coyotes in the area, and yeah. I don't know. To me, it comes down to common sense, to tell you the truth. Hamsters and huh? wild turkey. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll just tell you one little story is that, again, I live in uh, Andover, which isn't too far from here, and I run English setters or pointers, and they're not very good swimmers. And my old English setter thought it'd be a good idea to go after a muskrat in the pond. He'd come out of there with 26, with a cut from here to his ear. So it's not just coyotes that you really have to be aware of. Muskrats, I'm telling you right now, muskrats and groundhogs are two of the meanest animals you ever met in your life. And must, they had little, little, little animals disease. Muskrats will come at you and groundhogs are very aggressive. Coyotes will run away and I'm not kidding you, muskrats, I'll get calls, a uh, muskrat fell down on the egress window and I'm like, well, you know, don't go in there and just think you're gonna pull a little fuzzy critter out of there with your hand, because you'll come out and you'll probably have a little bit of your finger gone. But just grab them with a net or put some leather gloves on or something like that, but they are very aggressive. Did you ever check out that lake in Maple Grove by the Newtown Center? Did I what? Yeah, and, uh, more than likely a muskrat. Yep, they start building their, uh, their, their um, muskrat houses in uh, September and October, usually out of cattails, wild rice, and stuff like that. So more than likely it was a muskrat. Could have been a beaver or an otter. Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs>